Okay, today's lesson is going to be on uh, forces. I'm going to break this into two videos, one on gravitational force, weight, and normal force, and the second video on friction and um, tension for tension type of forces. And then we're going to combine the two uh, lessons um, uh, along with Newton's laws and start doing some problems in, in the following videos. So here we go. In nature, there are two general types of forces, fundamental and non-fundamental. Uh, fundamental forces, there's three of them, gravitational force, strong nuclear force, and weak, electro-weak forces. Um, we're really only going to concern ourselves uh, with gravitational forces at this time. And then we have non-fundamental forces, and those would be like uh, your traditional uh, pushes or pulls, friction, tension or rope, you know, normal force which supports a book on a table, things along those lines. All right, we have um, gravitational force. Newton's law of universal gravitation. Every particle in the universe exerts an attractive force on every other particle. Basically, a particle is a piece of matter small enough in size to be regarded as a mathematical point. The force that exert on the other is directed along the line joining the particles. This means as long as you have two objects, they're attracted to each other in a straight line. Okay. Let's assume we have two particles that have mass m1 and m2 and are separated by a distance r. The force of attraction between the two is given by the following formula. Force is equal to big G m1 m2 over r squared where once again this is the mass of one object this is the mass of the other object and this is the separation between the two squared so what is this g this is a factor that gets this equation to work in other words um, i know a lot of people have a hard time with the idea of having a, a constant like this uh, but think of the idea of the circumference of a circle Nobody has a problem with the idea that circumference is equal to pi times d. Uh, pi just makes that work. Uh, the circumference divided by the diameter is equal to pi. To get the force to be equal to this term here, we have to use this constant. And this constant, unlike pi, does change depending on what units you use. All right? So basically what we're saying is particle 1 has an attractive force on particle 2, equal and opposite, because of Newton's third law. All right, let's try a simple example. We have two, two spheres. Um, sphere 1 has a mass of 12 kilograms. Sphere 2 has a mass of 25 kilograms, and they're separated by a distance of 1.2 meters. And what is the gravitational attraction between the two? We put it into the equation. You can see it comes out to be 1.4 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons, um, which is an extremely small force. But you would expect that because you don't really feel gravitational attractions between you and other objects on the Earth. You do feel gravitational attractions between yourself and the Earth. And the reason being is, although your mass is small, the Earth's mass is huge. Um, and you actually measure this distance from the center of mass to the center of mass. So in other words, from your belly button to the belly button of the center of the Earth. All right. And remember Newton's third law that these forces are equal and opposite. The Earth pulls on the moon. The moon pulls equal and opposite on the Earth. All right. Let's get a definition of um, weight. Weight of an object on or above the Earth is a gravitational force that the Earth exerts on the object. It's actually due to the mass of the Earth and the mass of the object. Weight always acts downwards towards the center of the Earth. We know that, right? And when you're on another planet, the weight is due to the mass of that planet times the mass of the object that you're putting on that planet. And once again, since weight is a force, it will be measured in newtons. Now let's look at the relationship between weight and mass. 
we know weight, which is a force, it's the force of gravity between you and the Earth, is equal to the mass of the Earth times the mass of you over the distance between you squared. And I replace F here with weight. If we divide both sides of the equation by your mass, um, we should be, come up with an expression of what any body would feel or what any object would feel due to the gravitational force of the Earth. So I divide both sides by mass, so these two masses cancel out, and I divide weight by mass. But we know that weight is equal to mass times gravity as another expression. Um, basically what weight is the uh, force you apply to the floor is mass times gravity. Now how did I get that? Newton's second law. F equals ma. Force equals mass times the acceleration. And if I take that equation and I solve it for g, I get weight divided by mass. Or in other words, I can find out the gravitational pull due to the earth at any radius regardless of the object's mass because I divided both sides of the equation by mass. And this is the g that we think of in problems like 9.81 meters per second squared. And seeing that it is 9.8 meters per second squared, let's see if we can prove that. So here we go. We got the mass of the earth, the radius of the earth. We got our equation. We plug the units in and it comes up at 9.8. But then you might be saying to yourself, you know, I've always seen people like, like um, in different movies floating around the International Space Station. Well, basically the gravity there is like very, very small. So let's see what the gravity is actually at that point. Um, the space station is approximately 330 kilometers. Um, from the Earth's surface. So let's determine what gravity is at that point, since they seem to be floating around. So it must be pretty small, right? So there's the mass of the Earth. The new radius would be the radius of the Earth, which is from the center of the Earth to the Earth's surface, plus this new height, 3.3 times 10 to the fifth meters. I had to change kilometers to meters. So now I have a new radius that that space station's out. If I put the numbers in the equation, you can see that gravity is actually still very near 9. It does go down slightly, but not as much as you would think it would. Um, and we'll talk more about why uh, the astronauts are floating around inside the space station. It's not because they don't have gravity. If they didn't have gravity, the space station would fly off on a, on a straight line um, due to Newton's first law. All right, let's talk about the definition of normal force. We've got a brick sitting on a table. Normal force is one component of the force that a surface exerts on an object which it is in contact, namely the component that is perpendicular. So the weight is pushing down, the force normal is pushing back up. The normal force is not always equal to the weight like it's shown in this case, um, which I'll show you in the next slide. Imagine pushing down on a 15 Newton block with a force of 11 Newtons. Now the total force here would be the force normal is pushing up minus you pushing down with 11 and the block pushing down with 15. So the normal force is actually higher than the weight in this case. The normal force has to be 26 Newtons. Imagine pulling up on that block. The block still weighs 15, but you're pulling up with 11. The force normal is going to be less, as shown here. Yeah, the force normal pulling up. You pulling up as well with 11, and the block pushing down with 15. So therefore, the force normal is equal to 4 newtons. By the way, in both these cases, Newton's first law is... Um, apparent because the object isn't accelerating, um, it's at rest, so that's why all these forces have to equal zero. Alright, let's look at a block on a ramp. Okay, Obviously the block 
has weight which acts straight down. Part of that weight acts into the ramp and part of that weight acts down the ramp. So the normal force is not equal to the total weight, only the part of the weight that is acting into the ramp at a 90 degree angle, the perpendicular part. So which would in this case would be the blue one. So the normal force is only equal to the weight in the Y. Why isn't it sliding down the ramp then? If there's still a force that's unbalanced acting down the ramp, why isn't it sliding down the ramp? And hopefully you can guess that the reason is there's friction pushing back up the ramp and we'll talk more about friction in the next lecture. Okay, let's look at the idea of apparent weight. Apparent weight of an object is basically what a scale ring would be. If it was set on a scale, what would it weigh? And a lot of times that's not equal to the normal force. Um, for example, let's look at a guy in an elevator standing on a scale. He has a, a, an actual weight of 700 newtons. And that depends on the planet he's on, which is Earth, and how much mass he has, and how far from the center of the Earth he is. But let's say it's on the surface and he has a, a weight of 700 newtons. And the scale weighs 700. And there's no acceleration. Or, um, well, there's no acceleration, which means it could be at rest or moving with a constant velocity. Then let's say we have the elevator being pulled upwards. In this case, he still has a weight of 700 newtons, but the scale is going to read more than 700 newtons because not only does it have to lift him, but it has to accelerate him upwards. So it'll momentarily look like he weighs more while he's accelerating upwards. And the same thing is true if the elevator is accelerating downwards, but opposite. He still weighs 700. Um, but if the scale is like dropping out from underneath him, it is an apparent weight that's only 400 newtons. And this is really kind of interesting, but if the scale, if the cable itself breaks and the scale is in free fall, this is, he weighs 700 newtons, but the scale will read nothing because it's falling out from underneath him. So let's look at this a little closer. We have the weight acting down, and the normal force acting up. The normal force is kind of like the apparent weight. And if we say that all the forces in the Y equal mass times acceleration in the Y, which is Newton's second law, we can sum those forces. Force normal acting up, because we're calling up positive, and then the weight is acting downwards. All that is equal to the mass times acceleration. So the force normal in this case would be equal to the weight plus the acceleration. So this is what you would, the apparent weight would be, and this is the actual weight, the true weight. 